A problem with Satanism. Satanism. The problem with Satanism is that it's extremely selfish and arrogant and entitled, which is kind of the the attitude of the time if you if you look in a lot of arenas arrogance and entitlements and assumption of own perspective over others to a fault and i'm going to i'm going to preface this um, first off by saying i am not a satanist i'm not a wiccan I am not, I'm not Christian, I'm not atheist. Maybe you could term me agnostic because I do believe in an intelligent or a force out there or a force that we're all part of or like a big dance and we're all, we're all part of it and it has purpose and it has meaning. So this is where I'm coming from. So aside from that, I'm generally unaffiliated. I have been for a very long time. Uh, probably since my teens, I guess. But I'm starting to have my doubts about this now. What with all this Satanistic symbolism everywhere and all these these stars and politicians and people of high ranking that all seem to be part of one big club that we're not part of and we don't really know what's going on a lot of, a lot of people do but we don't uh, and when I say we I'm talking about broad general public there's a lot going on that seems illogical or seems off you don't quite understand it you don't but there's definitely patterns. You keep seeing the same things over and over again, right? Uh, music videos, uh, certain references, poses, people's gestures, handshakes. It's definitely there. And I feel by now, if anyone still feels like it's just a conspiracy theory, you're either not looking hard enough or you're in denial. So, me being a single mum and working full time, I don't have a lot of time or, mm, I don't have a lot of time to sit and research about things extensively. But I have definitely been following things over the years. Following certain YouTube channels, following certain, um, just stuff that comes across your way, you know, things, links, as you do, you know. And what it seems like is that, or if you had to aggregate everything, aggregate everything, it seems like when people become Satanist or when people are first introduced to it, uh, the main precept is um, uh, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. And initially, when you hear this, it sounds extremely enticing and it sounds so free it sounds so free and it sounds like you'd be able to explore every inclination that you wished or could think about right and this is great 
if this only applied to you. You being the actor, well, the, you being the active person, you being the subject, right? So let's just say you felt like um, doing what thou wilt would be uh, is is the whole of the law. So basically, I can do whatever I want, and that is the law. I can do whatever I want, and that is the law. This is fantastic. I could, I could, I don't need to work anymore. I could just take what I need from people. I could just take what I need from wherever. If I had, uh, I don't know, um, if a person had a certain sexual proclivity towards another person, they could just go ahead and do it. You know, I, a, guy, a guy sees a girl that he, he fancies, he'd be like, oh, she's all right, I'd like to have a go. He can have a go. He can go right ahead and have a go right there, right? Because that's the law. It's okay. He can do whatever he wants. And this is all well and fine and good. As long as it's just you, right? But you have to consider that this is also true for everybody else around you. <laughs> everybody else. Imagine if everybody, everybody, nobody exempted, could just go ahead and do whatever it was they wanted. it would be bedlam, it would be chaos, and then it would probably turn into something like the movie The Purge, where, where people have to lock themselves inside their houses to be safe from other people. And think what this would mean for little kids, or people who were smaller and weaker. What would this mean for people who were smaller and weaker what would this mean for little kids and babies? Them being the objects. What kinds of things would be happening to them on the regular? We've got to be careful here. Yeah. Of course, you could also consider on the other side, yeah, well, they, they also have, they're born and they can do whatever they want to. They can scream all day. They can play with whatever they want. They can take whatever toys what the, 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 they, they want from anybody else. They can be an absolute brat. Sure, okay. But at the end of the day, under this precept or under this law, the strong would rule over the weak. The strong would rule over the weak. So the people who would really suffer would be Anybody who couldn't defend themselves, babies, children, girls, boys, women. So it would basically be dominated by the strongest or the most, the strongest and the most manipulated. You've got to think deeply about this. Whenever something sounds extremely free on the outset, you've got to consider all angles. How would this affect everybody? Now, the interesting thing is, I looked into witchcraft a while back, or Wiccan, W-I-C-C-A-N, and um, be, uh, witchcraft is, is a little different. Um, yes, it comes from, both, both Satanism and witchcraft come from the pagan ideologies, like from before Christ, um, sort of nature worship, um, dealing with the spirits of the air, earth, or like elementals, that kind of thing. Um, I don't know all the details about it, and I've never practiced. I've never practiced. Um, but the, the difference between Satanism and um, witchcraft seems to be that witchcraft from back in the day, and always has been, its main precept has been, and thou harm none. Do what thou wilt. And thou harm none. Do what thou wilt. Basically, if you're not hurting anybody, do what you like. If you're not hurting anybody, do as you wish. See, there's a distinct difference there, right? Satanism. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. 
Nothing about if you're hurting anyone. Nothing about if you're blocking somebody off from what their own free will is to is is turning them towards. You know? But the Wiccan one or the witchcraft one or the old pagan one was uh and thou harm none as long as you're not hurting anyone. Do what thou wilt, do as you wish. There's a huge difference there. Immense. And I don't know if people are focusing on this main part here. Because the two different precepts, if those were followed out into the world, into real world repercussions, you have two completely different worlds going on. This one would be chaos and bedlam and um, torture and basically trauma for anyone who couldn't defend themselves, right? And on this side, you'd have a lot of creativity or people doing venturing out, a lot of adventuring, a lot of adventuresome stuff going on, or quite a lot of creativity, but people still with a sharp eye out for not hurting anyone. And it doesn't just say humans. And thou harm none. And thou harm none. It doesn't say and thou harm other people. Uh, or, and thou harm no other people. It doesn't say that. It says none. So this would mean all creatures. I don't know if this would exactly go right down to like being a Jane. You know, Janes don't even want to tread on a little creature. They walk around and they're so careful that they don't even tread on it. I don't know if it would go that far or... Because how can you control... Um, yeah. Uh, I don't know if, if this would go as far as Jainism. I mean, Jainism is e extremely considerate of all life forms, right? But in this, this particular witch one, this pagan belief, and thou harm none, do what thou wilt. It's, when it says none, it's, it's saying everything with life. Everything with life, so that means humans, animals, humans and animals, plants, but then we eat plants, would that be harming them? Ugh. Anyway, but the basics of it is, the pagan witchcraft one says, as long as you're not hurting anyone, you can do what you like. The Satanist, the Satanist one says, um, do, what, do whatever you like. And that's it. Just do whatever you like and that's it. With no repercussions. And I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of research and a lot of amazing and in-depth videos and, and uh, documentation coming out recently where people are nailing down and showing um, how all the, the exact uh, ramifications of, of Satanism and what goes along in it. And I'm not going to go into the details about it because I think anyone with an internet connection could probably find that out for themselves. There's a load on YouTube. It's, it, it's, it's not hidden, basically. You can find out about it if you want to. I'm not going to go into the details, but essentially what it boils down to is with Satanism, it's all, it looks very sexy. It's a, it's a very sexy time kind of religion. It's all, it's very sex-based. Um, there's a lot of androgyny, a lot of, you know, gay, you know, gay bum action, sodomy and that kind of thing. And that's not restricted to ages. Um, you know, that's the, I think the main angle is to, to sodomize as young as possible because apparently that's a, a gateway. It's a gate, it's a gateway to other dimensions, etc. A la Spider-Man universe kind of thing. <laughs> um... And essentially, at the end of it, uh, blood sacrifice and sacrificing uh, lives, animals, um, babies, people. Uh, it seems like nobody's safe, really. So it seems like with Satanism, if it's working in your favor, 
oh wonderful you've got a lot of freedom and you can be very powerful and very glamorous and have a lot of fame and that's wonderful cool but if you're on the receiving end of Satanism like as if you are an object in it like God help you and who knows what happens to your soul right no, no. once once a person is sacrificed what happens to the soul I um, do you, I, I don't know if you remember um, the Disney movie Little Mermaid uh, from like from like the 90s the one with the red hair she had red hair and I just remember this scene where she was she was visiting Ursula deep down in the in the sea um, the octopus lady and uh, Ursula was uh, she, Ursula was giving her that deal where if Ariel gives her her voice Ursula will give her legs that she can go and walk on land but if Ariel doesn't fulfill that deal she'll become this little brown creature that's just part of being a prisoner for for Ursula and Ursula actually shows Ariel these little brown creatures that that all used to be people before and this is what I think of when I think of what might happen to souls that are under the the claw basically they're trapped imagine imagine being a soul and being trapped somewhere you don't even have a body to get you out to physically leave or get you out of a place and, and coming coming back to that selfish thing about the the Satanists that entitled thing I mean if, if you think about the the sacrifice thing and basically just using other life forms as basically dynamos and battery powered pieces to um, evince the spirit world into action or to get the spirit world into action on your behalf um, it's extremely selfish and it's extremely entitled it's basically assuming that whatever you as the the active person is your will supersedes or is more important than anyone else you're working with or anyone else around you and also whatever or whoever you are sacrificing you are assuming in a complete state of ignorance you are assuming that your life means more, is more important than the creature you're about to sacrifice. What if, if in the whole spectrum of the world and the universe, that animal might be the turning point between one reality and another? The actions of that animal or that person that you're about to sacrifice might mean a whole new dimension or might mean a whole new paradigm that we all live in but because you want a certain you want something like power fame you want a certain action to happen in the world you're just going oh this thing is just a battery pack for me and I'm going to use it to power up something then that's going to get this thing done for me that's what it is it's the assumption that you're more important than this thing that you're about to slice open and offer up. Where do they get this from? Where do they, the, the presumptuousness, the pure entitled presumptuousness that they're so sure that their life has more meaning than anybody else. That's the mind-blowing part. Where do they get their info from? Where do they get their confidence from? <laughs> I, I, I don't know all the exact mechanics of it, as you can probably tell, but what I, what I am doing is I'm giving you a general 
glossed over view of everything that I've come across over the last, I don't know, at least 10 years. Mm. Another interesting thing about witchcraft is that um, they have the, the, the rule of three, the threefold rule. Now, you uh, often in Satanism, you'll see the, the number of the beast, the 666. This is not related to that. The, the threefold rule, the three rule, it's a very old one, and you don't hear it these days. You don't hear it in common, like for all the symbolism and everything that's going on on modern music videos and in TV shows and that kind of thing. Um, this rule of three, I don't hear it anywhere. And it relates to reincarnation too, I think. The rule of three states that whatever you visit on, unto others <coughs> will be revisited back on you threefold. Whatever you visit or whatever you put onto others will be revisited or put back onto you threefold at some point. Probably, maybe not immediately, maybe sometime in the future, maybe it's going to happen this life, maybe it's going to happen the next life, who knows. Um, I am into the... I do believe in reincarnation. Um, yeah. So, so that's another thing, that, that Satanism, like... The interesting thing with with witchcraft and Satanism, is I, I feel like modern day Satanism is its own thing. Like the pagan beliefs of before had a whole bunch of stuff, a whole bunch of stuff that, that people or uh, practitioners would refer to. But I feel like modern day Satanism is very distilled and it's missing out key parts of what the old paganism was into or what was what they believed because satanism has taken a uh, pagan witchcraft and taken that do what thou wilt right it's just taken that thing it has not said anything about not hurting anybody or not hurting anything satanism hasn't done that it's only taken the part about do what you like do what you like and then after that and, and don't think about it. Do what you like and forget about it. It's all cool. That's what Satanists done. Or Satanism. Modern day Satanism has done. It's taken that and it's left out the other part. Modern day Satanism also does not talk about the rule of three. Which is um, the three, three times. Just think of it like three times. Whatever you put out there into the universe, you will get back three times later. So this could actually, I mean, this this could actually really help people thinking about if you're going through something in your life and you don't know why, you, do, you keep experiencing the same kind of thing over and over again, it might, and, and you don't know why there's no, like, a, um, logical reason why. Maybe if you look back into your past and maybe it, it was even before this life, Maybe, you know, maybe it's merited. Maybe what you're going through is just a revisiting or a karma hitting back threefold because of what you did before. I've been carefully considering like my life at the moment. I feel like for what I am, for what I've been experiencing in this life, just um, you know, dating, I feel like I must have been a real cad in the last one or in a life before. I feel like I was probably a dick to women before because my dating life, oh man, you don't want to know the details, but like if I had to think about what I keep experiencing and then If I'm experiencing something now that keeps being consistent, either yeah, I don't know, either I'm doing the wrong thing or, or I'm really meant to be going through this. It could be quite funny if you think about it. Imagine a TV show, show that 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 worked with this. 
be so funny. That'd be a really good TV show, wouldn't it? A little bit like Quantum Leap, but like in one life you were doing this thing and you were a bad person here yeah, because you were taking advantage of these people. Ah, oh, live a long life, get rich, get powerful, okay, die. And then the TV show shows that same person being born into a totally different body in a different country and then experiencing the repercussions of what they did in that last one. It'd be quite good, right? What a TV show. <gasps> Maybe we are a TV show. Maybe we are. Maybe we're a show for someone or something out there. And it's all based on karmic repercussions. <laughs> yeah, anyway, so that is... Uh, that's the thing with uh, Satanism. That's the problem with Satanism. It's, it's really... It's, it's very selfish. It's very entitled. It's very arrogant. And it doesn't think of its repercussions, doesn't take responsibility, and doesn't deal with karma. Well, it, it, it welcomes a lot of intense karma upon a lot of people. Especially if those people don't read or don't, or aren't interested in finding out the details and the, and the, and the longer history. Mm. Oh, I forgot. So, you know how I said I was unaffiliated, right? So after seeing all this like Satanistic symbolism and all these pop stars and you know actors with the like the uh, and the and the uh, and the, and the thing with the hand underneath the shirt like that, those three gestures that like one-eyed man or like the throat cut thingy covering the throat and then this hand going under a shirt, those three are like gestures within. Uh, Masonic lodges, and I think, as we know, if you do, if you if you dig deep enough, uh, masonry, masonry on the whole looks very innocuous and kind of helpful, and it's all about social aid and churches and hospitals and helping people out. But then, as you go up the degrees, it essentially turns into Satanism. <laughs> if you get right at the top. You know, 33, meh, meh, meh. This is Satanism, basically. Anyway, so, with all this Masonic stuff going on, and, you know, the symbolism and everything, and it's right in your face, it's got me thinking, like, they're really pushing the, the Lucifer thing. They're really, really pushing really hard, aren't they? Gosh, that's a lot of money going into that. That's a lot of push. That's a lot of clout. That's a lot of manipulation, it's a lot of set design, it's a lot of costume design. This is an enormous amount of work. It's an industry, right? Right, okay. So, if there's all this push to, 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 to promote Satan or Lucifer, That means God's real. <laughs> Why would they invest so much money and time and effort, a whole industry, industry, worldwide industries into this kind of thing, if it didn't exist? So this means, okay, Lucifer must exist in whatever capacity. All right, hi Lucifer, cool. Mm -hmm. Hi Satan, whatever. But if Satan exists, that means God exists. That means Jesus Christ probably existed too. Yeah. <laughs> and and this is a funny place for me to be because for the longest time I haven't believed in Jesus Christ. Like when I was a kid, I was I was raised by my school in a, as as Christian. Not my not my parents, but I was raised generally Christian in my culture. And at a certain point I was like, we never see this guy. 
we never hear a voice, we never, you know, it's never like obvious, obvious in front of us. I don't know, but then if you look at the world and how everything's designed and... Who knows, you know? And if there's such a push to promote one side of a thing, such a push to denounce the existence of the other side, why would they be why would they go to the effort? Why would they go to the trouble? Why would they bother? <laughs> this means that God exists. This means that Jesus probably really was here. How about that? How about that? 